What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Invincibly Broken Podcast live. And as always, I am here, Orlando, joined with my boy, my brother from another mother, the sexy individual, Julian. Julian, please say hello. Hello. A man of many <laughs> words, Julian is. A man of many words. But, uh, but um, guys. I make them count. You make them count. And when you count. when you speak, I feel like the world has to listen, Julian. I know that you always have my ears, for sure. Both of them, sometimes. But anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, guys, um, very special episode today. We have a guest on the show. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, an influencer, a blogger, uh, a man who is who's passionate about um, men's mental health, uh, mm. a, a veteran, an examiner mm. of of, the, of modern masculinity. Yes. Um, uh, so, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce John Foley from Men's Methodology. John, welcome to the Invincibly Broken Podcast, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Uh, I, I would just change the intro just a bit. How about to aspiring influencer? I mean, aspiring, aspiring. we're all influencers. It doesn't matter yeah, how small. I have not arrived. Let's no, just make yeah. that crystal clear. Yeah. I have but, not arrived. But the important thing is who you're influencing, right? So even if you've gotten like one or two people, you know, I know that I listen, I watch your content, I listen to it, and you've influenced some of the ideas that we've had on the show a couple oh, wow. times and stuff Thank like you. that. So, so absolutely. Good. So I think it's I. So I. A lot of people have a when they say influencer, they think, oh, I gotta have a half a million followers. But you know, <laughs> small and mighty. Um, and we can talk about a little bit about that as uh, when we get on. But um, I'll give you an opportunity, John. Please introduce yourself to to uh, to the our listeners. Yeah. So um, where do I start? I mean, we'll say what it is. Uh, I'm an eight and a, eighteen and a half year uh, veteran at U.S. Air Force. Um, done tours in Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, on the side, I help my family. We have a family foundation, the James W. Foley Legacy Foundation for my older brother who passed about six years ago. Um, and other than that, I'm, I'm a dad to a princess of a daughter who's 13. You know, got to love those teenage years. <laughs> and, I don't know what that's like yet. <laughs> I, I can uh, wait. Bless you. Um, and uh, I have an eight-year-old Jack-Jack who, unfortunately, the guy is – my likeness and I, and I think my my mom laughs every time you know he's just he's a maniac so <laughs> <laughs> you know you know part of this uh mental journey is not only for me but for him as well <laughs> that's that's great he that's just doesn't awesome. know it yet <laughs> julian has teenage daughter and one following up right right behind her and you can see that that's a lot to do with those receding hairlines that he has working there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, they say, yeah. The TikTok dances alone are enough. <laughs> oh, thank God, none of them were into the TikTok. Uh, oh really? I, uh, I, uh, no, 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 I've been trying to get Julian to do TikTok and do some of the dances, and it's been hard. I, I mean, he, I know he has rhythm. Some. Don't don't hey, get me man. wrong. I, I can dance. You know. You know. We met at, at working. At a club. Uh, I was about to say. We met at the club. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't dancing at the nightclub together. We yes. weren't dancing at the nightclub together. So, um, so John, you know, you mentioned you you we mentioned that you've taken your you've taken yourself to a platform to Instagram, yeah. um, with men's method methodology. What what brought you to that to to that particular topic? Sure, sure. I mean. The bottom line up front is it's it's about my own personal mental health journey. Um, with that, like I said, an 18 and a half uh, year veteran, been in Iraq, Afghanistan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but my, I'm just going to call it what it is, my psych psychosis broke when mm -hmm. my older brother, who was reporting in Syria, captured, killed, and ultimately beheaded by ISIS. Um, and during that process, um, there's a propaganda video where he spoke to, right to me in my profession and mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, you know? And so uh, after that, my life spiraled, <laughs> you know, and, and me yeah. being a dude, 
I tried to white knuckle the steering wheel, me being a military guy, me being, you know, former football player, whatever. I got this. I can just muscle it. Well, you know what? Julian Orlando, I, I couldn't. Um, and so I had to seek out. Dude, and honestly, man, I th- I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Like, you know, you know, Julian and I, we we talk about our mental health journey ourselves. Um, mm. And first off, before I even get started, thank you for your service. And, and I'm deeply sorry for your loss. Mm. Um, thank you. No, you're very welcome. Thank you. But um, but, you know, it's um, it, it takes a lot. And Julian and I, we kind of touched on this a little bit, how I think we talk about how nowadays men it are starting to become a little more in tune with their feelings and yeah. right, when I, when i say in tune they're they're talking about it right like there's more conversation about men's mental health or or stop being tough or the suck it up and honestly i really attribute a lot of that to a lot of our veterans because of that conversation of ptsd and the, you know the the Iraq war has been an Afghanistan war those were those were really long wars I mean technically we're still at war this we still have troops deployed there and um you know That's a really good you, point yeah I you thought know, of it that way yeah you know you you see a lot of <clears throat> I never heard of mental health issues in men like that like if I heard about something it was because they were locked up they were crazy or they were a serial killer but then you know you know I you know, I was I was a teenager already. Uh, not even I was a, I was a man already when 9/11 happened. So when you hear about and you see and you have your own friends going to war and they're coming back different, and then you're learning about what they went through and why they're having problems dealing with holding a job or dealing with relationships, um, it's that's what opened up me to understand and and to have those feelings like letting them know like dude like there's no reason for you to be ashamed of that i mean like you put yourself out there for us for like our freedom you know you went out and you did something that a lot of us couldn't do so um so i think a lot of people i i i personally attribute attribute a lot of the 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 what's the word the phrase i'm looking for here the knowledge base that people have and the okay to talk about that is because of our our veterans and what they've gone through Oh, well, thank you. It's a unique perspective. <laughs> no, I, I, I try. I'm not just no, the face. On a <laughs> ginormous head. But no, but I, I definitely agree with you on that one. Um, also, you know, I, I never got the, the – I never deployed. So I got I, I got stuck where I was at. I never deployed, but you know, I, I've talked about that, you know, in previous episodes uh in my civilian life. I was a paramedic. So I do have what you know the Uncle Sugar likes to classify as non <clears throat> hold on a second, non-service connected PTSD. Because um, you know, it, during those times, like you said, hey, man up, you know, just get through it, you know, suck it up and go. And then as it started going through my military career, you know, uh, because of things that I might have seen, not necessarily horrific or something that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out just, you know, motor pool Mondays and all this, all of a sudden a smell came to me and it reminded me of something. So that's when I started seeking out. Um and then that's what I was classified with having PTSD. And my first gut reaction at the moment, I said, like, well, how can I have PTSD? I've never, I've never deployed. I've never been in combat. And then that's when that portion there, well, PTSD is not a combat only condition. You know, it's post-traumatic stress. Mm-hmm. It's something traumatic. I mean, I can go on and on about all the traumatic things that's gone. When I was seven years old, I went to a movie theater with my dad and he passed away right next to me. That's pretty Whoa. traumatic. Whoa. So, um, and, but oh again, yeah, right. Sorry. Like how I just float that out there like that, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but, but even then, you know, we're from that generation, the, you know, hey, man up, suck it up. You know, that's what yeah. it takes to be a man. You know, you play in Little League and you get beamed, you know, with an 80 mile because, uh, you know, your, your Little League coach is, is, is angry that he never made the majors and he never took anything off of that shit. Yeah. And you get beamed <laughs> and he's like, man up. I'm like, I'm and you and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're hustling out to first base going, <laughs> and, and, and up. So we were always, you know, we were always raised, at least, you know, our generation. Um, you know, we were we we're definitely raised in us being Hispanic, 
Mm. You know, you got to be a man. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Uh, it, everything falls on us uh, as far as that so yeah and and again i've said it many a times yeah do i feel that this generation is a little bit soft but one of the things that i do attribute it to it is what you mentioned in the beginning of the of the show is that we're a lot more in tune Absolutely. which i definitely encourage and i'm all about it because you know hey better life than pharmacology yeah. but it's better life. we're getting there yeah. we're getting there. I, I think we're moving in the right we're moving in the right direction i mean yeah we're not, we're not, we're, I don't think we've paved anything, but you know, a lot of, a lot of those stereotypes have come to light. And I think guys like us, right. Us three have, I think we've done a lot to break that barrier down. Um, because just because we're talking about it and we use, yeah. you know, no, this platform that, that some people might attribute these platforms to negativity, um, you know, hate speech and stuff like <laughs> that. And you know, we're, I, we're, we're, we're running around with our white caps and, and trying to do some good with it. But um, John, uh, another question for you. Uh, I know you mentioned that you went through some tough times. Do you mind kind of telling us, you know, you know, that, that that's so much a timeline, but like going through that tough time, when, you know, when did you realize that maybe you might've really mm -hmm. had a problem and that what, what were the steps that you took to, to make yourself better? And then what, le and then leading up to men's methodology? Yeah, so, so I mean, right, right off, one of the challenges, I guess you would say, with my brother's death is that it was so pro prolific, so public, that um, uh, it was everywhere. In addition, at the time, I was in Belgium, uh, you know, obviously with my family, and uh, the day he died is the same birthday as my daughter. And oh, so we're going to the commissary or the grocery store for those lay people. Mm -hmm. We're going to these, you know, other, other places, restaurants. And why is Jim on the TV? Why is Uncle Jim in the newspaper? Why is Uncle oh, Jim on the magazine? It's like, you, why is Jim on the radio? Why are they talking about James Foley on the radio? And so, and she was... Oh my gosh, like seven. This is her seventh birthday. Oh, so she totally understands, you know, at that point, I'm sure it's tough because she 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 knows him. Like it's not like she's like two years old, you know. Yeah. And so and so with that, um, you know, your first instinct, I think, as a man is to protect, right? First first protect and and you know, I was failing. I mean, essentially we were in the TOF or essentially lodging hotel. And uh, trying to lock ourselves in, and and at the same time, you have ISIS trolls trying to send pictures of people dying and whatever via Facebook and all social media methods available. So it was a tough time, to say the least. Um, but ultimately, the Air Force did us a solid and brought us immediately back home. Uh, and Washington, D.C. was the place to set plant and, and move out the problem with that is, is that my brother was interned for about two years and me personally i had a let's call it a toxic shame or embarrassment the fact that i didn't do more you know i failed my older brother and oh by the way as a result even though it was propaganda but you know there are articles and I know other people, uh, other people that were with him, you know, said he, he suffered the most, I think, as of my connection and what I do. And so that's those two things, uh, failure to get him home and and just the fact that he suffered for my own choices, career choices, which I think are noble, I mean, you know, but still that, that, that's a tough, tall order to swallow uh, as a younger I'm, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, it's, we all we, we all take we all try to 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 take blame, you know, for a lot of situations that happened. You know, what could I have done differently? Um, you know, we go back to to being to being men, right? Like, you know, we talk about that. Like, we are expected to be the protector, and you know, you're the you're the little brother. You know, I'm I'm the I'm the big brother, and yeah, you, know. you know, I'm 39 years old. My brother's three years younger than me, and I still look out for him. Like 100. 
like like he was that three year old kid with the with the juice mustache across <laughs> the face, you know, like always looking, always uh, still looking out for him. Yeah. And you know, even when he, even now, like even when he has issues or transitions, uh, you know, in 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 his job or or with his kids and or whatever it is, I feel like I need to do more because he's my little brother. Or in the same way, I feel, you know, um. <clears throat> I don't think you, I've I've told you, John, but you know, I, I the listeners know my daughter is autistic, mm. and I blame myself all the time. Mm. Like I and and honestly, I I didn't. I know I I know in my head I didn't make her autistic, right? Yeah, like I didn't I didn't get a chance to draw up that blo- that blueprint. If I did, it you know I definitely would have crossed that one out, you know. But it's it's tough and. I blame myself for that all the time. You know, I, you know, she doesn't, she's nonverbal um, and she doesn't talk. So she can't communicate to me like, you know, how other people have, you know, the privilege of hearing their daughter or their son tell them, I love you, daddy, or I want, I want, I want candy. I want to go to the zoo. And, you know, and I can't, you know, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I stay up at night just wishing that she'd ask me for a fucking pony. Because I would, I would find, I would build a barn outside my house to give it to her. She asked if asked me for it, you know. So, I, I, and you know, a lot of the times it's easy, right? Because I'm sure when people are trying to help you, um, like grieve, they say things like, "It's not your fault. Don't don't blame yourself," you know, all these type of things. And and but you can't help, but do yeah. it. No, you, you know? can't. You know, it's 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 tough. So <clears throat> I wanted to kind of chime in on that one, uh, John. So uh, I wanted to kind of pivot a little bit away uh, from that. You know, like I- I'm still trying to process everything that you that you just said. Um, wow. And I'm trying to figure out how to follow up on that. But uh, my question to you is so. Let's jump to men's methodology. So the term methodology, yes. because we have, okay, a method, a step from point A to point B in military terms, you know, we have an o- operation order. We have this, 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 and this is what we have to do. Oh my God. You're speaking my language. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> so me, I'm uh, just like, fuck it. Just do it. Let's do whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so obviously with, with the term methodology, like I said, there's, there's, like almost like saying the scientific method you have your hypothesis you have this you have that all the way down to your results so what is it that you have found is one of the uh what is your method methodology like for example i saw today a post that you put on there that i thought i was like if i could give you a hug i would which is the (laughs) one about the the young man saying that there's going to be a generation of women who are looking for a man that doesn't exist gary flowers jr Yes, he's great. Yeah, and I, I was like going to my wife, see, bitch, <laughs> dude. Not it's the so purpose funny. of the post. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I told you. <laughs> so, and and uh, and I know that uh, we're we're having a, a a focus on like the uh, on the masculinity. Uh, Orlando and I have talked about how not to be toxic masculinity, masculinity, because obviously I can't speak today, um, and I swear I'm sober. You know, is that part of the method methodology? Because and it's not trying to. Um, I jokingly said the the man up movement. Uh, you know, once upon a time, but I'm kind of almost seeing that with you. What it, that we're trying to actually raise, and what I mean raise not like you're a boy oh no actually yeah uh raise no, yeah. young men be actually men but what i'm not talking about is this toxic uh macho man is being somebody that is um that has worth that has value that has self worth and self value and that could actually be you know a productive person and you know a a, a good husband to some lucky individual out there i'm like yeah i'm gonna go because so, so I, I think it's I think the question you're asking is is a two part question, or at least I'm assuming it's a two part question. Yes, one, one. Uh, I'm, pu- I'm probably going to get spears for this. I don't think there's any any such thing as toxic ma- masculinity. I think there's a difference between masculinity and misogyny, right? 
Okay. And misog and the Me Too movement was born out of misogyny, right? Essentially, a mistreatment, a hatred for women. That's not what we're talking about. Masculinity okay. to me is it's biological in nature. If you look it up in the dictionary, um, that's what you'll find. But but also, you know, I, I think there are these archetypes, right? And and me being in the military and and wanting to help and serve people, that's that's one archetype that that I've always as aspired to. But really, that archetype, you know, it's one thing to be strong, but we need to look at that definition of strength and one, how you get from point A to point B of being not only physically, spiritually, and mentally strong. And the way you get there <clears throat> is by failure. It's really the blessing of failure that you fail, and I've failed a ton, that you hit rock bottom as I did a couple of times. Rock bottom is a solid foundation to start from. That's where learning and growth occurs. And from there, the setup happens. Amen. And from the setup comes comeback. Absolutely. Um, it, it, that's, that's, that's strong right there, man. But, uh, you know, it's it's i'm glad that julian asked that question and i'm, and I'm really glad that you kind of talk about that because the both of us um we kind of agree we agree with you you know I, I i like that the way you you describe that it's not toxic masculinity it's it's two parts and before i, I go into my follow-up question for all you guys that are out there listening to us live please interact if you have any questions for john or julian and myself a comment we're more than happy to to answer your questions and if you ever so much inclined hit the like button share and subscribe to our channel it'll help us a lot you know i know there's a lot of people out there that talk about this stuff on a on a daily basis and it's important to them so if you just so just hit it it's one button it's two you probably clicked more times to get to us than it is to share but um <laughs> but Fact. you know i think it's just exactly so i i have a son Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's, some, it's a topic that Julie and I talk a lot about a lot about raising a son compared to raising a daughter. And I feel like it's going to be the opposite. Back in the day, we used to put uh, men used to be put a lot more emphasis on the on the on the girl. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure she she's raised right. So she doesn't date a looter loser. She's not going to turn out to be a whore. Like, well, all these things like, you know, like daddy's little girl, like everything yeah, protect was protect her, her the, protect her, make sure she doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll murder that. Yeah, I'll murder yeah. that asshole. Shotgun, like, you know, yep. yeah, exactly. The whole nine yards. And it's funny because my mom, I, I'm going to say this and, and I know I'm going to get chuckles, but my mom raised me and my brother like girls. <laughs> like that mentality of girls, like that vision that like my mom always, since I was old enough to know what the opposite opposite sex was, was like, no woman will ever be good enough for you. <laughs> she, I am, she used to tell me all the time, I'm the only woman that'll never lie to you. I'm the only woman that has your back. I'm the only, uh, women are just after, you know, what you have. And like, she always instilled that in me that, you know, I didn't need someone to be better that i needed to love myself first yes. at least that's how i interpreted her her message because she literally said these hoes like knock them off they don't you don't need them you know you're you know and and literally that message was like that up until i turned about like 25 26 and she was like listen i'm not getting any younger I don't want to be an old grandma. <laughs> when are you gonna get married find yourself a nice girl whatever but um but like I find myself now, like like I think back to my relationship with my dad. Was it? It wasn't a bad relationship, but my dad was very macho. Like you know, I couldn't play with stuffed animals. I had to play sports. You know, if I fell, get up. I don't really ever remember my dad really ever consoling me, um, like that. And then you know, me with my son, like I'm very loving with my son. I show him it, it as much, if not more, affection than my daughter because I want him to know what love is. And when he falls down, I'm like, it's okay, buddy. Let daddy see what happened. What hurts? Show daddy what hurts. It's your knee. You want me to kiss your boo-boo? I'll kiss your boo-boo. And, you know, and then I tell him, okay, now you feel better. Now let's get up and let's, you fell down to learn to get yourself back up. So go upstairs. Or like, if he falls on a slide, I'm like, all right, you fell. Now let's get up and let's, let's try, let's try it again. You know? And, 
I don't remember, you know, I, I never try to be like, all right, tough enough. I mean, there's been a couple of times where he whines and I'm like, yo, let's chill out, bro. Like, let's like sack up and, and, and walk this way. But, um, and I think that's just habit because it's baked into my system, but I try really, I try really hard to show him a sensitive side from another man. Cause I'm pretty much the only man he sees all the time. So yeah. that video that, um, that Jerry Flowers Jr. posted, I think it's true because the expectation is false, right? All these years, you know, you're, 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 you, we, we've been telling girls and, and ladies that you're Cinderella. You need to be treated with these expectations. You flowers, open doors, polite. Um, he has to have a good job. He has to, he has to be a provider. He has to be able to turn a wrench, screwdriver, build you a house, pay to build someone to build a house, all these things. But no one ever told me that. Did your mom and dad have that conversation with you, Julian? Like what your wife should be, you're Hispanic. So you'd probably be like, she needs to be clean and she needs to cook. It was probably like the <laughs> bar that's set, right? Pretty much. Yeah. For, yeah, so, yeah. You know, I, no one ever tells us what to expect from. I put on a condo. And, and put a condo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a good point. Like, you know, it, why is it important for for us to set that expectation for young for boys and young men? I mean, at, at two twofold, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, I think. Uh, number one, I think this process starts from the very beginning, as you're talking about. Um, boys and girls get socialized differently, right? When you know, my daughter was four or whatever. Uh, you know, it was you can just see the difference, you know, these, you know, share your feelings. It's okay to feel whatever you want to feel, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and with my little boy, it's about, you know, dominate sports. And trust me, I try to be as mindful as, as possible, <laughs> you know, but I am a dude and human. Um, but you, you can just, just see how like the family reacts to the two different genders. And, yeah. you know, if, if Jack were to get hurt, even if I'm not in his presence, or if Rory were to get hurt, you, you can see the different reactions. Um, so I, I would, to your point, I think somewhat, I think not somewhat, I think men and women at a younger age are socialized differently. As yeah. we get older, you know, and we start to go to school and interact in interpersonal relationships, college, getting a job, the emotional IQ part of the equation becomes more and more important, especially when it comes into to even work. It becomes uh, romantic relationships, you know, asking for what you need and setting boundaries as I'm talking to two married men mm -hmm. is a key part of a successful marriage, you know? And so I know a ton of guys that have, as a result of not having those two things present in their marriage, it, it dissolved, you know, you know, guys being voiceless in their own uh, relationships, you know, and, and even setting boundaries at work because gosh, especially working from home, there's no nine to five anymore. You have a computer and a cell phone. It's 24, seven, 365. So, <laughs> and we've all had those bosses, you know, I live with one. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned that success is failure. And we're talking about marriage and everything because I have failed in marriage twice before. <laughs> for me. He's a glutton. Glutton. Yeah. Julian is a glutton for punishment. Hey, he's a romantic. I, I love that about <laughs> you. I love that about you. Here's the thing. And, and, and I appreciate the, the elegant, the eloquence in which you put into that for me it was more like oh god i'm single i'm horrible at talking to women i'm gonna die alone so i was more like the woman in that, in that situation or stereotypically what the woman was so orlando uh, knows me, or, or now orlando yeah. knows me for like almost 20 20 plus years oh uh, my julian, is, julian is, the, is, the friend, is the friend zone guy he's I, a friend, zone. friend zone. me too man me too and you know but but yeah like going back to what you were saying as far as uh yes because i, I don't have i have a stepson okay mm. I, and I, whom i love very much but I, um i've had him since he was about eight he's 16 now so i've seen i, I i've been there for part of his uh for, for a, a large part of his 
you know, development, his, his growth, emotional and all, and all that stuff. And, and you're absolutely right. Cause I, I was just kind of thinking back a little bit and I was like, man, cause you know, I have my daughters, I have my 15 year old, I have a nine year old and I have a five year old. And even though the, the two older ones are not with me, obviously I, I saw them as, as they develop, but they're, they're my princesses. They're my princesses. You know, everything was like, I will kill this entire village full of men, women, and children if something happens to that little girl. With a five-year-old, I'm <laughs> go with God. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> the one telling her, go hit him. You know, because it, it's just a different, it, I, I feel it's such a different dynamic. And, you know, growing up, boys, you put them in the backyard, they they raise themselves, <laughs> just put all the food, some water, and they'll raise themselves. But you know, with with girls, everything's this like is why this I, is why the majority of serial killers turn out to be men, Julian, <laughs> because because that was the that was the key way that they were. Well, raised. that was a failure, and we recognized it, and now we're learning from it. It's fine. <laughs> Come on, that's part of success. But Orlando, methodology. Or, Orlando, you bring up a really good point. By the statistics, uh, the majority of guys are in jail. By the yeah. statistics, the majority of men commit uh, aggressive, aggravated assaults. Yep. But you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You yeah. know, and and you could liken it to they have nowhere. One, they have nowhere to put this emotional frustration. Two, they don't know. They don't. They are not. We are not. Let me just start that. We are not equipped with the correct tools to do that. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I, I mean, literally, I've been on this journey for about six years, and I'm 41 years old. So <laughs> it, it shows how, how much of my lifespan I've even been thinking about these things. And some of these things I've been thinking about, I don't even know what the correct terms. And then finally, it's like, boom, oh, yeah, you know, there's this. Boom. Oh, yeah, there's this. And one of the reasons why I started men's methodology is because when I was looking on Instagram, when I was looking on Facebook, you know, mindfulness, yoga, therapy, they're all pictures of women. It's it's yeah. it's viewed Absolutely. from very much of a, a feminine lens, which is not bad, but we need to shift that paradigm and Absolutely. get the guys in there, you know. And, so. and, and it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned on a couple of parts, you know, Ju like Julie and I, we talk about uh, mental health all the time. And I always talk about that. I, and I love to meditate oh, and, wow. yeah. and I openly say it. But then when I tell people that I meditate, they're like, okay, all right. Uh, do you wear, do you wear, yeah. Do you wear yoga pants when you meditate or yeah, man. whatever they can do? You? And um, Maybe. I, comfortable. Yeah, there we are. I fit nicely. I'm size large now, medium. I can do mediums, but uh, but you know it. People don't like one of the biggest things that I think that is a dead art that a lot of people take for granted. I don't think it's something that you're born with is self awareness, right? Mm. And I don't know why. I and I try to always look back to my own childhood. I've personally. I've personally always been a very self-aware person, even as a younger age. Like I didn't, I didn't do drugs as a kid, you know. I drank. I got into plenty of trouble. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but like there was, you know, like there was always that. I always ran with friends, and I had family members with friends that were like that that got into trouble. That either were going to jail, they were stealing, and stuff like that. These were like some of these people are my best, are were my best friends, and. Some of them are still my best friends to this day, mm -hmm. but I never got tangled up in that mess. And in some cases, I was probably smarter not to get caught in some of those cases. But and the stat, and, and I won't elaborate because statute of limitation hasn't ran out on any of those. But uh, but you know, I was always aware. Like even now, when I have conversations with people, like I I'm always thinking, did that come out right? You know, how 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 did they feel? When I say that, or, you know, if I'm upset at somebody on customer service, I'm like, well, did that person have a good day? Like, you know, why, you know what I mean? Like, why, why, why am I not getting through this individual? And I think it's important to, to talk about that. Let people know that, Hey, you know, let, let people, but like, the, like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer. Start to your home, right? The foundation is at home, right? So you, if you have small children, you are the reason they're going to be what, they're going to be 
in the future. I don't care what you say. Those people that say I have no control over my children, let them be kids. You're the problem that we're having. Um, you know, as long as they're under your roof and you're paying for stuff, you are fully responsible for these children. So, you know, teaching them self awareness, like you know, even talking to them, be like, okay, you did it. You get something in trouble. Instead of hitting them upside the head, be like, why did you do it? You know, what do you think the consequences are? How do you think you made that person feel? And, and actually, I'm 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 so glad, Orlando, that you brought that self awareness because, um, you know, I. <sighs> You know, in the years, you know, let's go back 10, 15 years, a lot of it, you know, uh, one of the things that was um, preached is, hey, you got to love yourself. You got to love yourself. You got to respect yourself, which is fine. But you also have to know yourself, just like you said, self-awareness, because like sometimes, you know, you you have to be able to be the bigger person and say, I think I'm being an asshole right now, um, you know, because you might be saying something. Story of my life. <laughs> it's all of our lives. You're in good company. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. We could write a book about it. As a matter of fact, we'll get we'll we'll we'll, we'll it's work a project. On that. Yeah, it's a project. <laughs> it's, a project. <laughs> it's a passion project. Uh, but yes, no. Uh, self awareness. I, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with self love because actually, I, I I think a lot of these mental health issues, you know, um, self esteem issues, would probably be remedied or not completely, but at least remedied a little bit if people had a little bit more self-love, self-worth about themselves. But we also have to be aware of ourselves. Like I said, sometimes you got to be the bigger person and say, yeah, that was my fault. My bad. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, and <laughs> the first part is acceptance. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> That's the that's the hardest pill to swallow. Um, I know one of the exercises I I've, I've always done in my career um, in, in management is I always try to bring people through a a a a, 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 a vision of self discovery. Right? You tell me you have an issue or there's a problem peyote? that we're peyote. Yeah, yeah. I wish <laughs> make my job easier. But you know, but I always try uh, a vision walk. Is that what it's called? The vision walk, right? No, ayahuasca ayahuasca mm. um but um but mm. i always try to take a path like i'll ask him a question like you know i have this issue okay so what's your issue and then my questions are all like well why do you have that issue and then they give you an answer and then you're like you take that answer and you just ask them another question you just let them keep fishing it out themselves like until they figure out like well why do you feel like you can't do it what do you need to do it you know and and it's it's like a little jedi mind trick but you know it's it walks it teaches that is them all open ended fact finding questions, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, somebody That's when you it. avoid yes or no questions that have a yes or no answer, so you could get to the bottom of it. You're so, right. And you want to make it you want to make it thoughtful, right? You want to make it thoughtful questions. Open ended questions can can are are good, right? But you also want it so that they get they come to the conclusion themselves because it's a higher level of accountability for the individual. Right when they come up with idea for themselves, and you tell them to execute on that idea, and but it also helps them work through a problem. You know, I mean, you you're we're all we've all of eight we're all older men. We've all had plenty of jobs. How many times has the boss told you go we'll figure it out? <laughs> you know, I don't know how to do it. Go figure it out. And how does that make you feel? And, and, and you're both veterans, so I'm sure they I'm, I'm sure they all have been. There's been a couple times where they're just like, we'll figure it out. You know. Um, it's, it, you know, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something that it, it helps with the, with, with that dynamic of helping them self-identify self under I mean, self-identification is a big terminology, right? Self-identify, but self-awareness is not like you could pigeonhole somebody into something, right? Oh, I identify as a man or I identify as a woman or I identify as whatever it is that you wish to identify with, which is nothing wrong with that. But are, how are we leading them to that conclusion? You know, are, are how in tuned are they with their body and their mind? Um, you know, how aware they are of their, of what's going on in their head. So I think it's important that self-awareness is, is a, is it just should be a key factor that everybody should be working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so John, one of the other things that I really like about the messages that that you have on your social media and men, and men's methodology is succeeding. 
Mm. I think it's big, right? And I really like the way you position yourself, right? Because I have serious qualms with people that defi- that want to define success, right? And mm-hmm. they're like these, especially for men, right? Because they're these alpha male, Gary V type, you know, fucking work 300 hours a day, forget about everything else in life, go, 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 go. And they, and they, and they put this message of uber aggressive, uber overpowering, be overbearing to get what you want, not what you need. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I like success too. And I would like more than what I have, but I think there's a way to go about that. And I think the way that you've messaged what success looks like or how to, or what your discovery and how to get, how to be successful is is good. So if you kind of talk, talk us through that a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) It's actually kind of a good segue. Um, The reason why I do that is because when I was going through where I'm still going through my mental health journey, um, when I got to the Pentagon, the great thing about the Pentagon is you can work and you can work all the time. You can work as much as you want. And I tried to be that guy. I tried to be those archetypes that you just described. And the tighter I gripped, the more I slipped through my hands. You know, my the more I was starting to become detached from my wife, the more I was just starting to get detached from my kids, the more um, self-loathing I became. And what happens is, is as you guys were just talking about, there was no version of self-care. There was no reach out. I was just trying to me, 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 me. So I got to a point where I'm not going to lie, it's pretty scary. In that, you know, I was thinking about, you know, a permanent solution for a temporary situation, i.e. suicide. So I caution people when they say that. I think balance is key. I mean, I think balance is is something that we all aspire to. <laughs> <laughs> or to or, or they have an illusion of sure but i mean i mean hey you know it, it's yeah. you know some days you're gonna have to work a little bit harder than 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 others 100 percent, right and then sometimes you know as life will have it you know it'll bring you right back to your your family or your loved ones and, and the idea is try to do the best you can with both priorities in mind because they're both a priority you know you know, you can't be all one way with family because then maybe you won't have the means to live and vice versa, right? Absolutely. So go ahead. So, so what are some of the things that you've done to, mm. you know, some some exercises that you've done um, through your journey through mental health that's helped you with your relationship at home and, and it, maybe just your relationship with yourself? Because it really it starts with you, right? Like, you know, you have to you have to be better in order to make everything else better around you. So I, I can be pretty blunt with you. Um, I again, I'm a work in progress. Uh, divorced, um, and and <laughs> you know, recently just got got out of a long term relationship, which so Julian still has one up on you. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure that out for myself. But number one. I understand that I do have P- PTSD and I am getting help for that. That's number one. Number two, I am actively trying to build a community of guys here in St. Louis where I'm actually originally from the Northeast. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it's important because through my life, especially after my divorce, I thought I could find uh, you know, self-worth going from gal to gal to gal. Well, what happens is you, is you have a support center in that, you know, wonderful woman. But then when it doesn't work out, it's like, and yeah. you have nothing, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now I'm, I'm trying to learn from my experiences and, and build my band of brothers for lack of a better term. And so that way, one, I can be more comfortable in myself and that sometimes, well, for me, well, and guys in general, I think guys just like go all in, which they should with, with their significant others and, and prioritize them. But what happens at times for the majority of men, myself included, is they become cut off from the rest of society. And as a result, and it's not fair, I'm, 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 we're talking wonderful women, but no woman is going to 
fully satisfy another human being. Like, <laughs> it's just not. Yeah, and vice versa. It's too. No man, yes, no man, thank will, you. no man will satisfy yes. a woman one hundred percent. And we yeah. all have individual. It's like you know, I like like it's like I like Ju- I know Julian is a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan, <laughs> and he wants to watch that football game every Sunday. And you know, it's just one out. It's just a couple, a few hours a day. But you know, his wife might not understand the game or understand that passion because she has her own passions. So you got to kind of support each other. In that, like, it's okay to have time Different for things. yourselves. Yeah, and, and at the same time, you know, that's how we recharge, right? So, mm-hmm. so you know, whether it's Julian or I'm watching the Pats, you know, sorry that they they're no longer perfect, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's but still, he's super. I didn't even bring it up to him because I know he's still sour. Uh, no, no, no. I, actually, I'm no. I, I knew sometime <laughs> somewhere. I, I, I'm glad we got that L out of the way. Oh, um, I did not please. expect a perfect season. Come you on, cried. you cried. You were talking shit the whole way through. I the, was not. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. I, I, mean, of I mean, basically, at the at the end of the day, it's like this. You know, people really think it's you know, and and I'm still learning about this, but my my hypothesis is is people think that it's fifty fifty, and really, it's not because you need two whole people. It's a hundred, a hundred. It's two whole people coming together with their friends and their family, right, and and blending lives together. But but it's not like you're losing, you know, your your life. You're you're gaining and you're complementing, and and I think that sometimes uh, is lost and, and I'm yeah. guilty of it. Guilty as charged. It, 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 it. We actually talked about that one time that, you know, when it comes to a relationship, not just necessarily a marriage, but a relationship, a committed relationship, um, it's okay for you to do your thing, me to do my thing. We are trying to create this life together, but we're not, we're not trying to lose our identities over it. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of that also, again, if we go, if we roll it back is that old school mentality of the, 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 the threat of losing the other person. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why we try to inc- encapsulate ourselves in this relationship, because if he or she goes to the supermarket, she, they might find the next Mr. or Mrs. Right. Right. Like they might find, you know, someone who's younger or better looking or whatever the case may be. And it shouldn't be like that, you know. Um, you know, I, I always remember, like, you know, we Julie and I worked at a at a at a nightclub together, and that's mm-hmm. how we became friends. And when we, I was, I had a girlfriend who worked at that nightclub, right? And then we also had a mutual friend that had a girlfriend that worked in nightclub. And me, I've never been a jealous person, so I'm just like, you're working at a nightclub, like you know, sex sells. Like she's going to wear promiscuous outfits to try to get tips so she can make yeah, you know, money. Part, part of the scene. If you have an issue with this, don't date, don't date a bartender at a nightclub. Like, <laughs> you know, that's like dating a stripper and then being mad at her, at, you know, at, 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 at the month, at what she does for a living. Like there's an expectation to have. And I remember this particular, this particular guy, they would have arguments before they go to work because she would wear an outfit and she's like, well, I'm going to work. And he'd be like, you can't wear that. And I'm like, well, what the hell am I supposed to wear? A turtleneck and, and, uh, and an overcoat. And he's like, that's a great idea. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, I think I it's, think I remember who you're talking about. Too. I, know, I know. I know it took you a minute to, to, to put two and two together. I, I don't want to call him out because he, he's, he's, nah. he's friends with us on social media and oh. he's a, but he's a butthurt uh, individual, but, um, but it's important to have, Elijah, like I know, like I've told my wife on many occasions, like go, like you know, staying home with a a a, a five year old and a two year old is mind numbing. Like I don't know what kind of co- how many times you can have a conversation <laughs> about dinosaurs and Sophia the First and Paw Patrol without wanting to like literally bang your head against a wall. You know, I think it's important to have adult conversations, not only with your significant other, but with your friends. Get out, talk. Yeah, I, I personally, I'm a people watcher. I love to meet new people. Like, you know, it's it it helps soothes me. As much as I'm an extrovert, I'm also an introvert. So I, I like to read. Reading is what helps me decompress. I love to read. So I'll I can read for hours, and I like alone. Like I like quiet. I don't want to talk about certain things during certain times and stuff like that. Like that's how I know that I do it. You know, my my wife on the other hand, diarrhea of the mouth. She wants to talk about everything. 
Like she doesn't want to, she doesn't want me to miss one detail. And, you know, as much as it, it pains me and annoys me at the time or even earlier in our relationship, like now I'm like, all right, she needs to, this is how she is going to get it all out. You know, sometimes, you know, I get short tempered and I'm like, you've told me this like eight times. Can we give me the, the footnote version or whatever the case may be? But, you know, it's but you have to have a good understanding of of your significant other. Right. So I think it's important. It's a it's a, it's a good it's a it's a it's healthy to have your own thing. And talk yeah. About stuff, you know. 100%. How do you follow that? <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think the way you, way you follow it though is is that you know trying trying to shift gears is that I think at the end of the day, right, you have to have a belief in yourself, and in that, and you guys had mentioned confidence and whatnot, but having that belief allows you to kind of hold space, and and what do I mean by holding space? You know, being like, hey. You know, I need to go on this guy's trip. Hey, I need to go watch the game. You know, and and I think that's key. And I, and and with that, you know, being able to ask for what you need, I think I think is key. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, and so and and it's it could be hard at times, right? Like you know, mm -hmm. like saying, "Hey, I want to go on a guy's trip," because in your head you're already telling yourself that she's gonna say no. I know she's gonna say no. As soon as she finds out who I'm going with, she's gonna say she's gonna say no. But game you know, over, game over, right? But you know, it's but I, it all boils back down to communication, right? I think you've mentioned this a couple, a few times in your in on your social media platform. Julie and I talk about this all the time, communication, and this and it's underrated, but it. it it's underrated, overrated, and really difficult to do. It's not easy because we all fall victim to not communicating enough or not listening enough or maybe over talking, right? So yes. I think it's, 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 it's never, you're never going to perfect that. It's going to be a constant battle. I know I'm, I, I'm not perfect. I know it's a battle for me, myself, in, in all aspects in life. So um, it's important for sure. Um, so, uh, some a couple of the things that I that I saw um, that you've made mention to is, and I, and I like a lot actually is is healthy venting. <sighs> I like this a lot. I like healthy venting, he healthy healthy venting versus emotional dumping. Mm. And I think Julian and I have talked about this before, and even <laughs> like in our own personal conversations that we have on the phone. Can you kind of like talk us through that, John? Like, like what what exactly is healthy venting, and and, and actually describe both emotional emotional dumping and healthy venting because I think it plays key in in <laughs> men's health, women's health, social media, the the whole the whole nine yards. Okay, for for one, I just want to let everyone out there know I am not a psychologist. I want to put some kind of like disclaimer out there and say. Do not follow this as clinical guidance. All opinion. It's not. It's definitely <laughs> all opinion. I think the the emotional dumping come, comes where you're just ju just just unloading on this said individual who is supposed to be your significant other, but they didn't sign up to be a punching bag, right? Whereas, as again, as you said, uh, having a conversation or not even conversation, but complaining, I forget the other term, unfortunately, um, but is is having the same conversation. I hate to say this term. I don't hate to say it, but, you know, with with <laughs> loving kindness and respect for your partner, family member friend or even coworker, right? And that, you know, everyone has a battlefield that no one knows about. Everyone has their leg in a trap. And you know, it's it's like picking that hard issue, but having a start a soft startup, you know, and be like, hey, the other day, you know, when X happened, you know, <laughs> I really feel X. You know, and and you did why? What do you think about that? 
versus coming off the top row when you're like, you P-O-S, you piece of crap, <laughs> you know, you know, you're doing all this to me and, and everything, you know, it's you, 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 you. And like, <laughs> the only thing that's going to happen for that conversation is someone walking one way and the other person walking that way. And, you know, it's, it's not good. So. I'm laughing because I'm picturing my wife jumping off the top rope with like wrestler, <laughs> like ultimate warrior tassels. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, yeah, right. Fly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I, I think these skills, I mean, again, by no means, like I said, divorced, you know, I feel like at this point, I'm a serial dater. Um, <laughs> I am still learning these, these concepts, and 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 the, <laughs> these are all what I call uh, character building events and life experiences that I am trying to share with other dudes mm -hmm. so that they, or should I say we can fail better together. <laughs> fail better, man. Fact. Fact. Fail better. Always. Um, yeah, it, it's good. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I got a question for you, Julian, you know, now that we've, uh, We've had this pot. I know it's hard to play play it backwards, right? But like, if you go back to your first marriage after you were divorced, and now after <laughs> after you, I could easily go there. Go ahead. <laughs> but after now that you're <laughs> twenty one years old, I never had a conversation start like that. So come on, baby, hit me with it. Now that you we've had these conversations, right? Like, because we've talked about this a lot, right? Mental health. We've talked about man versus woman. You know men are from Mars, women are from Venus, the whole nine yards. And, and after hearing him, you know, talk about that and how, you know, fail better. Do you think you'd be better off where you are if you were fat, if you could turn back the hands of time so after your relationship ended till to now? Like knowing what you know, like you find that you're more open minded, that you're having these conversations in the uh, open. I, yes. And I, and I think I'm where I'm at now uh inadvertently because of that mm -hmm. um because uh like i, I know i've I, i've kind of talked about this and it kind of revolves around that whole not losing your identity when you're in a relationship with my mm -hmm. first marriage i was yeah baby we'll do whatever you want yep i had no input no nothing uh you might as well just put me out in the front and wipe your feet on me that's what i was uh, on my second marriage, then I said, all right, let me be a little bit more assertive. Um, I got a little too assertive. I didn't put my hands on anybody. And let me just throw that out there. I didn't put my hands on anybody. But, you know, even before the end of the conversation, you know, before the hands stopped moving, Orlando understands. Uh, I was like, no, 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 fuck that. No. So I, there was absolutely no no happy medium. Now, one of the, the, the good things also that, um, this is good for both men and women is because my wife now has gone through the exact same thing, two failed marriages, very similar situations. So now we have that understanding. We have that experience. We have those two failures that we, um, learn from. And then one of the, one of them is the communication part. Um, after my second marriage, I was so like, um, paranoid you know i would tell my wife i'm gonna go after work and meet up with the guys you know i'm gonna have a couple of beers she'd be like okay are you mad <laughs> did you not hear what i said you know because that's that that's the environment that i was living in previously you know where i was you know going through stuff with with my with my ex-wife and i was like okay and then sometimes even you know we're going on 10 years together um I'll still be like, yeah, I'm going to go have it. And they should be like, are you telling me or are you asking me? I'm like, telling you? I mean, is it okay anyway? You know, so I, I, I still have a hard time getting out of those habits, but we have a lot of communication. But again, back to the self-awareness part also and knowing your partner, I know when she's not, you know, because she's getting all Caserio Puerto Rican is about to shank me. So I'll be like, you know what? I'll leave her alone. <laughs> So, and, and John, what message would you tell your, your younger self now? 
right? So now, I mean, you sound like, you know, I know clinically you're you're not a doctor, you know, but I find that other Fact. other human other humans' insight are always good, right? Like it's always good to hear someone else's. I mean, we all have, even though we have like minds, we all have different opinions, but you know. There's a, I know for a fact there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that are in that 20 to 20 to 30 age group that are still, you know, I, I don't care what anybody says. You don't know who you are. You know, it's very, yeah. very, very small, a very small percentage of men and women that don't, you know, know, have it together, right, at that early in that age. So what would you tell your younger self now that you wish you knew then? So I got a two-part answer for you. I like it. Uh, number one is find your why. You know, I think your why yeah. is what drives you. The why is what pushes you to uh, accomplish things. And for me, my why is my two kiddos, Rory and Jack. Number two is I'm still working this through, but I call it BAP, kind of like one of those old Batman uh, comic books, you know, PAL. Mm-hmm. BAP. Um, it stands for belief, action, and persistence, you know. And as we've talked about on this podcast, you have to have a belief in self. No one's going to believe in you. And yes, mom's going to, mom and dad are going to believe believe in you and your family. But aside, outside of that circle, you know, you are going to have to either fake it till you make it, or have that passion in you to go out and do. And then going out and doing comes the action piece. There's no right time to start. Just like you guys are saying, there's no right time to start this podcast. You went through these iterations, you know, Mac versus PC, you know, fumbling. <laughs> that is a part yeah. of life. That that failure is a part of life. And that's where the action piece is. And the final thing is you have to persist. And there's going to be good days. There are going to be bad days. There are going to be days that you're not going to be able to get out of your bed. But that's where you... Remember the why, and you keep going. Absolutely, you, you just persist. You don't give up. It's, and I and, think, and yeah, I think it's important for, I think it's important for people to hear another human say that another guy, another woman, whoever. You know, we all. One of the biggest things that I've learned, the one of the biggest thing I learned about this podcast and doing this podcast is people's perception is not reality, right? And I think Julian and I stumbled upon that completely by accident when we decided to talk about our mental health on the podcast. It kind of just absolutely changed the direction of our our podcast. And it honestly, it gave, it, it really took us back because we, we were shocked that people were actually listening to what we were saying. And that, you know, that, that we became human because one of the biggest things that I uh, that that I see I don't know about I don't know about you John but like people are like but how can you be battling depression you look so happy on your pictures on social media you know what I mean like I see you with in pictures with you and your wife or or you and your kids how can you possibly be depressed like how can you have I, I just can't see you every time I see you out you have a smile on your face and you know, you said that nobody knows about the wounded leg or if your leg's caught in a trap or, you know, the demons that you, 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 you fight inside. And, you know, yes, you're not certified on paper for anything, but it's good. Like, I like your message, John. I, li- I like what you, I like what you're doing on your, well, on your platform. You. And you shouldn't just, and, and, and I tell you this because I, I, I have to tell myself this just because you are not a professional you're real <laughs> you have a real story to tell people and this is why we bring you know people like you so they can hear that story and let the the people that are listening right now know that this shit happens to everybody nobody is nobody safe right look nobody. Julian, and I, Julian and I we've been friends for 20 years and we didn't know that about each other right when we started talking about depression and my battle through cancer he was like I I had no idea. Even was like, I feel like I feel like a piece of shit because I never reached out to you. Because guys don't talk about it. Yeah, you know, it's okay exactly. for a guy to talk to a girl. It's okay for girls to talk about it amongst themselves, but we don't talk about 
Absolutely. It's 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 weird. even like it's it's funny because like even like within your own personal and it's and it's it's I think it's even weirder for when men open up to women about it, right? Because I see I feel like women always want that emotionally connected man, but then when mm. they get one, they're like, mm. <laughs> what, what what the hell do I do with this? Because they're not equipped to deal with that because they've never had it before, right? Because they're like, uh, can you just go like hammer something on the wall or f- go fix something and and call it a day? You know, go have. You want me to get you a twelve pack? Like, what 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 do you, what do you need? You know. So um, it's a it's a good message. I like that. Bap. Yeah, I that like I said, it's a work in progress. As am I, but that's what I'm going with for right now. <laughs> Merch. You can make it merch. Mm. Merchandise. No, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, I thought Julian looked confused, so I, I, to, I, just, throw it off I just throw it off for him. <laughs> Julian, 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 I love you, man. Yeah, I love him, too. You see, I see. You, you see what, what I take on, on uh, just a regular basis, but that's okay, man. That's okay. <laughs> so, so, John, you have... You have your social media platform. Are you yes. thinking about doing anything else? Like anything else in the future? YouTube, podcast? Mm. I, right, right now, as I say, I'm I'm an army of one. Mm-hmm. And so right, what I'm trying to do is do one thing well. And I'm on Facebook uh, where you guys found the little logo and the, the uh, picture um, somewhat on LinkedIn. Um, but what I'm finding is I, I prefer to to do one thing well and so i've considered podcasts i've considered other things but for right now i think i'm gonna stick on on instagram i've had a, a bit of a success so i want to stick there and hopefully grow an audience from absolutely, that platform absolutely. well i if if you want my personal opinion i think you should absolutely think about doing a podcast <laughs> i think i think you i think you have a lot more than what what, what julian and i had <laughs> <laughs> going when we first when we first started down you guys are legit though i don't yeah. care you know we all start from humble beginnings yeah yeah but you that you definitely have a, a little, a little hot food there. and popsicle stick <laughs> some shit together and uh yeah so but you, you do you want if i ask you a little bit if you tell i mean and i i'm don't want to kind of go back um into uh an emotional moment but i i Obviously, on your Instagram, there is the uh, the the JamesFoleyFoundation.org website. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it. If it's if is it okay if I go ahead? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes, that's why I have it on my bio. Um, yes, the James W. Legacy Fa- Fo- James W. <laughs> James W. Foley Legacy Foundation uh, was created uh, for two reasons in mind. Number one, to protect journalists. And number two, to bring all Americans home. And that's what we do. We advocate uh, for those hostages held overseas to come home. And uh, we have a a safety curriculum for journalists. Uh, We also send journalists, young journalists and old journalists to this uh, training called HEFAT. It's basically a a survival and evade to to give them some inkling of of what they're going into. And, And you you think you're like, oh, well, why would I need this training? I mean, we saw what happened with the George Floyd, the riots and stuff, right? And so these types of environment, unfortunately, are within our own country. So we need to prepare these journalists, especially the less seasoned, uh, the junior journalists, to go out and bring the news to us. And so that's uh, the two things that, that we do. And really, I, I believe it's a great way to honor my brother's legacy. And I'd be remiss to say um, that my my mother, Diane Foley, is the engine behind it. I'm I'm probably one of the highest paid interns, free interns, uh, <laughs> a part of this organization. But no, it's it's uh, the tagline for our, our organization uh, is inspiring moral courage one person at a time. And and really I try to live up to my my brother's legacy, James's legacy, um, and and that's that's what I'm trying to do um, in life and through Instagram. Yep, that's that's crazy, John. So, 
so these journalists, right? These, so I, I, I think I have some understanding of how uh, journalists are going to have independent journalists and journalists that work for major publications or syndicates, but they don't get any type of, do they get any type of training from, from the companies they work for, for these, for going into hot zones or, or aggressive areas like riots or anything like that? Yeah, so uh, I'm not the expert on this. Uh, I find that I'm not really the expert on anything much, but uh, <laughs> it's it's essentially just like hiring a contractor, right? Gotcha. At the time when my brother was in Syria, I believe he was getting like something like thirty or fifty dollars a story. Can you imagine that? And going yeah. to Syria, following your passion, and getting thirty to fifty dollars per per story. Don't quote me on that, but it was something like obscenely low. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I do believe, you know, as budgets are getting tight, the staff journalists that are on the payroll and, and get some of these trainings and get the personal security teams are, are much rarer and usually more prolific. Th those are, you know, the Christian Amon Pors or the Rich Engel, Richard Ingalls, you know, those are, those are the people that, are, you know, they've, they're seasoned, their career. We're, we're talking about the little guy. You know the the fresh out of journalism school you know bright eye bushy tail hey let's just give you a little dose of reality have you heard of something called a vpn right so that way people can't track your location can't you know you can't uh steal your information steal your personal information so, so and what other type of trainings do 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 the organization do to try to help prepare them other than you know i i would never even thought about that like the, uh, using a vpn i'm sure that's that, that's really important now that you now that you mention it yeah, yeah i would have never thought about that yeah yeah i mean i mean some of that in, in today's day and age i mean it's just uh you know cyber security is a, a, a big one right you know <laughs> there are stories of people going on to facebook and, and trying to get a fixer to go into different countries you know, where everyone and anyone can see, you know, and, and they're just like, hey, do, 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 I'm just going to, you know, do whatever. I'm just going to follow my dream. And and what, what we're trying to do is give them a, a bit of a dose of reality. We're not trying to discourage them because we do believe in journalism and the need to report um, and, and give voice to the voiceless. Um, that was one of the things that my brother did champion. And in a way, I think I'm trying to champion uh, on the men's mental health side as well. So, excellent, excellent. Well, look, man, thank you for everything that you do. It's been a real treat to talk to you. Um, yeah, you guys really, are awesome. Yeah, you know, I appreciate it, man. Listen, we are here for you. If you ever, if you want to, if you're really looking to start a podcast, man, let us know. <laughs> let us know. We'll be more than happy to help you out, man, and collaborate with you. Whatever, whatever you need, man. I, I think there's plenty. There's plenty of ears in this world. So. Um, definitely a lot of love to to put out there, but um, but thank you. I really appreciate you. I know was, we've been working on this for a couple of months, trying to get you on on the show yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I'm glad that we have you as a friend of the show now. So you are welcome back here, whenever you like. Um, but uh, do you have something, Julian? Or you yeah, hoping? I was just gonna say no, no. I was gonna say definitely uh, thank John and um. As everybody can see at the bottom, if you want a little bit more information, you know, uh, please visit the James Foley Foundation dot org uh, website, you know, find out how you could do more, how you could contribute. You know, let's get to this is uh, up until this interview was coming. I had no idea about any of this. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, with a military background, I know that there's people still being held captive overseas. But I mean, you know, the more you know, the more that um uh, information definitely information is power um john it was such a pleasure like i had so much fun today uh somebody who's actually kind of like-minded like us <laughs> as far as wanting to try and get rid of a lot of the stigma as far as the way men were hardwired to be for so many years and now we're trying to kind of take small steps baby steps to you know hey let's let's tweak it absolutely Absolutely. Um, guys, for you, for all you guys listening out there, we will make sure that we have all of John's information and tags for social media on our show notes for the podcast on YouTube and here on Facebook Live. Again, you can follow John at Men's Methodology on Instagram mm -hmm. and 
Julian showed you guys the website for you guys going to check it out. Give our boy a follow. Interact with him. He has some great messages and some and some really unique perspective and fresh perspective on life. And doesn't necessarily have to be a man to to follow his content. So, ladies out there, give uh, give John a follow, um, uh, please. Um, and for and with that being said. It's a good stopping point for today's show. So, guys, um, as always, as you're listening now, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. That's th- I'm all I'm asking is for three little things right now. And I'm probably going to ask for a little bit more. But still, <laughs> just hit the share button. That way, your other, let your friends know that what you're listening to. If you like our contact, please, we greatly appreciate it. Subscribe. It helps us out a lot with the growth and the, and the, and the infamous YouTube and Facebook algorithms. If you are a listener to our podcast or if you want to let our friends know about the podcast, just simply tell them to search the Invincibly Broken Podcast on any podcasting platform. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, on all of them. So if you search us on there, please get subscribed to the podcast. It does help us out a lot. Leave us a review. Give us a little heart. I'll take emojis, whatever you want. Just show us how you get. If you don't like us, let us know anyway. We'd be more than happy to listen to you. You guys can go ahead and shoot us a message or you can DM us at invincibly underscore broken on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook at invincibly broken, Twitter at invincibly broken. I think you guys are starting to catch the whole the whole uh, rhythm here. We're, we're on everything. You can also visit us at www.invincibilybroken.com. Our library of episodes are on there. Comments are open so that you can comment and share your feedback <laughs> on there as well. If you liked something that I said and didn't like something that Julian said, please, by all <laughs> means, let us know. If you want to be a guest on our show, let us know. We want to have conversations with everybody and anybody. So we are here for you guys, and we appreciate everything that you do. If you'd like to follow me personally on instagram you can follow me at invincibly underscore orlando and you can follow me personally at invincibly underscore julian guys until next time please enjoy the rest of your week and we will talk to you later again john thank you very much it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show julian i it's it's something all the time. <laughs> yeah. Until yeah. next time, guys. I'll, I'll talk yeah. to you later. All right. <laughs>